Check out BigBadToyStore.com for this and other great toys. Sixteen bits is too much for this two-bit villain. See what I did there? Hey, what's up, YouTube land? MGo here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Takara Transformers Mega Drive Megatron. So here we are, and there it is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. So here it is. You got 16 bits of Mega Drive Megatron. And in case you are wondering, it is a fully transformable antagonistic video game console. Yay. And yes, Transformers Takara, licensed by Sega, 30th anniversary, woo! On the side, you have Mega Drive Megatron. On the other side, guess what? It says Mega Drive Megatron. And on the top of the box, guess what? It says Mega Drive Megatron! On the bottom of the box, a bunch of stuff that I cannot read, and unfortunately, no sad Pac-Man worth box ever. On the back of the box, you have your obligatory product, shots of does this, that, the other, all that good stuff, and some more stuff that I cannot read, and cartridges and whatnot, and package designed by Kentaro Ani Fujimoto. Props to my boy Kentaro. I don't know him personally, I just, I just felt the need to read that out loud because it sounded cool in my head. Anyway, that's it for the packaging. Oh! I need to pick that... I need to pick this up off the floor again because I totally forgot that there's more to the packaging here. It is on a magnetic clasp here. I prematurely tossed. That ever happened to you? <laughs> anyway, this is on a magnetic clasp. And you open it up, and in here is where the figure sits and a bunch of logos. Two logos that I can't read, and next time, oh, I don't know what that means. And on this here, you have 16 bits Mega Drive high audio. Now I can toss the box. There we go. So, ready. So, moving right along, here we have the Mega Drive Megatron. And as you can see, it is Megatron. And he transforms into uh, a uh, Sega Genesis. A Mega Drive Sega here anyway. And um, yeah, this thing <laughs> is really neat. <laughs> and I really do like it. Getting closer on the details, you can see here, 16 bits done in gold chrome. And that's a lot of other details here. You got AV, Intelligent Terminal, Power On, High Grade, multi purpose Use. Over here, you got your knobs and whatnot, your... Headphone volume, I guess. You got your on and off, cartridge lock, power, reset, Mega Drive Sega! Um, right here you got your jacks for your controllers. And on the back, some little spots here, I guess is where the, uh, the cables and such would plug into. The underside, it's all pretty compact. You would never know this turns into a robot. I mean, besides all the panel lines, I mean, there's nothing really giving it away that there's a robot in here. So, it does its job, and it does it well. It's very, very cool. Um, as you can see, it is it is quite uh, quite small. Um, just for comparison, here he is with uh, Chrome Dome. You can see. Yeah, it's... Right there. See? <laughs> A deluxe-sized transformer can basically sit atop it. Here he is with Snarl. Just because... Just because I finally found Snarl. He'll be next. Don't worry. He'll be next. So, there you go. There he is with Snarl. And, uh, yeah. It's a video gaming console. This is crazy. This is so crazy. It's awesome. Now, of course, he does come with accessories. And what is a video game console without a controller? Yes, it does come with a little Sega controller. Fully detailed. Sega computer, video game control pad, you got your start buttons, your A, B, C triggers, you got your D-pad. The buttons do work, they actually do press in, which is pretty cool. And so is the start button. The start button you can actually press. The D-pad is actually a working D-pad. It moves. It's crazy. It is really crazy. Um, 
but you have the wire. Um, it doesn't seem like it's something that would snap over time. It feels like it's a good sturdy, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily wire or just kind of a stiffer plastic. I'm not entirely sure what this is made of, but it doesn't seem like this is something that would snap if you mess with it too much. So that's pretty cool. And then you have the jack right there with the Sega logo on it. So basically, you're going to come right here. you notice that one of the jacks is molded in and one of the jacks is poking out a little bit. That's because this one right here, you just get your fingernail in there. You can pop that out, put that off to the side, and then you can plug in your controller. Right there. So now you can properly game. Yay! I wish they made a little transforming. They, they, they need to make like Ultra Magnus turn into a TV just so all this can come together or something. Or right, have Shockwave. Shockwave! Have Shockwave transform into a TV that plugs into the gaming system. Oh, that would be awesome! I will give you all my money if you make that happen. Make, make that happen, please. Please. Make me happy. Make me happy. But there you go. So you have... <laughs> Brainstorming! Um, so here we go. Got your controller. And the last bit, of course, is, yeah, well, now we got a controller, but we don't have a game to play. What? What? Oh, oh, look, you get one of those. You get a cartridge. You get Sonic the Hedgehog. Apparently Japanese Sonic the Hedgehog. The most famous hedgehog. See right there, Sonic the Hedgehog. Fully licensed, of course. All, all of this is fully licensed by Sega. So nobody's going to get in trouble. And on the back, you even have your little warnings and whatnots written in Japanese. Again, I don't know what any of this says, but hey, it's made in Japan. I know what that says. And there you go. And it does actually plug into the top. Now, this door is actually spring-loaded. You take it, pop it in. It doesn't actually lock in, but it stays in just fine. And you pull it out, and that door closes up. So there you go. Now we got a game to play. Now we can sit here and play Sonic on our shockwave television. Yeah? Maybe we can make that happen. Just saying. That would be cool. Anyway. So there you go. This is all around very neat thing. I love it. This thing is just too cool. It is just adorable. It's precious. It's so precious. I love it. I really, really do. But the main event is, of course, that this can transform into a robot. What? Yes, it can. So let's get down to transformation. We'll take out the cartridge. We'll unplug the controller. We'll put that off to the side for now. We'll put the little cap back on right here. You just plug that right back in. There you go. And now we'll get down to the transformation, shall we? Let's. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this whole side section here. We're going to remove this and put this off to the side. What? Parts for me? Worst toy ever? No, it's not. This is freaking cool. So we're going to take this and put this off to the side. And now you're left with this center portion here. Once you do that, you're going to take this section right here, extend it downward like so, and it will actually it will click into place. And it's already doing some of the transformation for me. You want to just split this section right here. And you're going to bring this portion down like this. So on a double hinge right here, you just want to make sure that you bring it all the way out. Like so. Once you've done that, you're going to come in here. You're going to pull out the foot on this whole armature here. You want to bring it out. You want to make sure that this whole armature comes all the way against that, against that wall right there. You're going to take this portion here, you're going to slide it down, just like that. And you're just going to close this panel, close that panel, closes up all those gaps. You're going to take the foot here and you're going to extend it, like that. And there you go, you can angle it back a bit because it's on that, second, that secondary hinge right in there. So you can take and angle it back, like that. And you're going to take this portion right here, and it's on a rotational joint. You're just going to take it and just bring it down like that. Then you're going to bring that leg down, rotate it. Oh, which way is forward? This is forward. You're going to take it and rotate it like that. So basically, this everything's facing the underside of the console right now. Second vest, same as the first. Extend this all the way down. 
like that. Grab this whole foot assembly, bring that down, extend that down, close that up, close that up. Come in here, extend his feet right there. And again, you can just make sure that sits flat against that wall there. You can angle this back like so, so the foot is in, in a more centralized location. Just like that. Take this piece right here, just rotate it down on that double hinge, like so. Rotate it forward. And there you got the legs all done. So now once you've done that, bring this up a little bit. You're going to rotate the waist 180 right there. So now everything is facing forward. You can see the 16 bit right there. You want to come to the arms. You're going to take this, extend it outward. You're going to untab this section right here, which will reveal the head. Bring this whole assembly down. You want to take the shoulder piece here. It's on a double hinge. You just want to take it and shift it up like that. And you can bring it up as high as you want, as low as you want. I like to bring it just right up to... I, I, I like it meeting right against where the silver piece is. So I like to bring it just right, right there. That's a sweet spot for me. Take the fist, flip it down. You can take this forearm piece, which is also on a double hinge. You can take this and angle it outwards to bulk out his uh, his forearms a bit. And there you go. Let me raise the camera a little bit more. Because <laughs> it'd be nice if you could see what I'm doing, and I don't have to keep doing this. So you're going to take the arm, bring it out, untap that section, bring that down. No, nothing broke. I don't know what that little flake was. <laughs> you want to bring that shoulder piece up, flip the hand down, take that forearm piece, just bring that out again, just to bulk things out a bit. Make sure your shoulder pieces are all the way down, like that. And then you just want to take this center section right here, flip this back to reveal some silver, take these panels right here. Flip them back so it makes everything a little more streamlined. And you can take his head and it does pull up slightly. Not a lot, it pulls up slightly. And there you go. There you have the Mega Drive, the Mega Drive, the Mega Drive Megatron in his robot mode. It is a Sega Megatron. Clever. How clever is this? Too clever. So clever my brain is going to explode and ooze out of my ears. That's how clever this is. I love this! I love it. <laughs> oh, man. Now, it's not exactly in Megatron colors because he is mostly black. You know, there is still some of the silver and red there, so it still works. I, I still love this. I really, really do. It is very, very cool. Um... Getting closer on the head sculpt. Very nice head sculpt if my camera will focus. Come on, man, focus. Focus for me. There we go. Very nice head sculpt. Very cool look on old Buckethead there. Nice silver paint. Nice red eyes. Just all around very clean. You see that silver that's revealed right here. Nice silver paint. With some red detailing there in the uh, midsection. With some nice panel lining. And uh, all around, it's a very, very cool design. I really do like it, and I love all the silver paint throughout. It looks very, very good. Just so, so nice. So cool. So, so cool. Articulation-wise, his head can rotate. You can do a full 360. He can look up and down. The arms can do a full 360. They can go in and out. At, there's a joint in here that allows for inward and outward movement as well as the transformation joints. Uh, you do have a swivel at the elbow. You do have an elbow joint, of course. This uh, forearm piece kind of gets in the way, so you have to move that out of the way. But there you go. You have your elbow joint. Uh, no rotation at the, at the wrist, but he does have inward movements. Um, as you can see, there's no peg holes in here, so he can't actually hold any weapons, but that's okay. I don't care. 
He does have a waist joint. Uh, legs can go forward, they can go back, they can go in and out. And these skirt pieces in here are actually on joints also to accommodate any additional movements. And they actually will stay up on their own. These side skirts here will also move. Uh, you do get a thigh swivel. You do get pretty much a double jointed knee, which is nice. The feet can move up and down. You get a little bit of pivots. So he is pretty poseable. So there you have that. Now, of course, you do have this bit here, this side bit of the console just hanging around. Now, what are you going to do with that? Oh, I don't know. Let's turn it into a cannon, shall we? Let's. So you're going to take this section right here, and you're just going to split it open like that. You're going to come in here, take this section, pull it down like that, and slide it forward like so to reveal the barrel. And there you go. Now, you got two clips right here. That will fit into these two slots right there. So you just take it and just clip that on and voila. Now he's got his 16-bit fusion cannon. Now one thing that's a little annoying about this figure is that it, it is a bit hard to make him stand because he does have, he has really small feet as you can see. He doesn't have much of a footprint so there's not a whole lot of stability on this guy, but you can't get him to stand. You just have to fiddle with him just a little bit and get the weights distributed just right. But you can't get him to stand, but it can be a little tricky. Now, of course, you do still have the controller lying around. What do you do with the controller? Oh, guess what? This incorporates into the robot mode also. So you're just going to take the controller, split it in half like so, and you're going to flip up this right here, flip it up on both sides. You're going to turn Megatron around. And this side right here with the uh, with the ABC buttons, you're going to plug into this shoulder. You see there slots right here. Just take it, clip it right in. And these are on a uh, on uh, this joint as well as this joint, so it can swivel outwards. Just going to take that, just plug that in there. You can raise it up and swivel it out. Take this one, just plug it in, raise it up, swivel it out. And then you take the cord here, and you bring this around, and this will plug in right here into the side of the fusion cannon. Just plug that in right there, and there you go. So everything is incorporated into the robot mode, nice and neat, and just makes things look a lot cooler. Now, of course, the cartridge, the only storage for it is you just leave it in this chest if you want to. If you want, you can totally just leave that cartridge right there in this chest. No problem. Up to you. I don't really care for it in this chest. But, again, you have the option. But, there you go. There is Mega Drive. Mega... Mega... I almost said Mega Drive. The me, no, it is Mega Drive. Mega... Sometimes I hate my tongue. Sometimes I do. I really do. I don't know. I, I just... <sighs> He's cool. I like him. I like him very much. Now, please, please stand here while I get my comparisons. Uh, uh, for comparison, here he is with Voyager Roadbuster. So you can see how he scales. He is basically Voyager-sized. So, he is a nicely-sized figure. Whoa. Hey. Hey there, you. Nobody said you could fall. Nobody said you could fall. Don't <laughs> stay there. Here he is with Classics. Optimus Prime. And a little bit taller. Tiny bit taller than Classics Prime. Here he is with Mania King. Just because I like Mania King. You can see. Tad bit shorter, but almost right there with Mania King. Here he is with Hegemon. You can see he's a little bit shorter than Hegemon. I'm going to get to him. I promise I will get to Hegemon. I promise, because he's really cool. I will review him eventually. I'll get to him. I promise, I promise, I promise. So here he is with Hegemon. And, uh, yeah. Um, as far as this guy goes, 
He is a very cool figure. This is just, it's such a novelty item, and I really love it. This is just, this thing is just too, too clever, and I really, really like it. And, um, I love the fact that we are, hey, don't you fall when I'm trying to wrap things up. Um, I, I do love the fact that they're going to be putting out an Optimus Prime that turns into a PlayStation to go with this guy. That's going to be awesome. I already got it pre-ordered, so you will see that on this channel. Um, so, the console wars is going to take on a whole new meaning. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's very cool. Um, and, you know, as far as the quality of this figure goes, very good quality, very sturdy. You know, nothing really feels fragile or anything. I, I, I haven't had any of those, you know, oh my god, I might break something moments with this figure. Everything seems... Really sturdy. Um, his ankles are a tad bit on the loose side. And like I said, I wish his feet were just a bit bigger, you know, just to give him a bit more stability. That's the only real gripe I have with this figure is that I just, I just wish his feet were bigger. Um, other than that, I, I, I applaud this figure. This thing is just, it's so creative and just such a neat idea that I think was executed really well. This may not be for everybody, but if the, if this does appeal to you, I would definitely say pick it up. This thing is really, really cool, and I quite, quite like it. So, And you get a little cartridge, a little Sonic the Hedgehog cartridge. Come on! Come on! <laughs> they thought of everything. <sighs> but anyway, don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the Takara Transformers Mega Drive Megatron, and this is MGO saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be geek, be proud, palm in your face. Hey wave! Wave! What the- Whoa! Whoa, man! What is with this getup? It's all part of my new plan. I'm gonna disguise myself as this thing called a video game system. Apparently it's all the rage with the human children. Oh, really? Yes, yes. So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna sneak into their homes and poison the children's minds. And once we do that, they'll be under our control and the world will be ours. Oh, okay, but, um... Here's the thing, I've, I've done some research on this, and, uh, apparently you scanned a, um, a, a very old video gaming system. I mean, why didn't you scan something a bit more modern, like one of those, uh, iPads or Xboxes? Something that the, uh, human children are a bit more used to. But, 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 but it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's... Nobody's really going to even look at you twice if they look at you once. I mean, it's it's like Soundwave turning into a cassette player. I mean, at this point, the only time people look at him is to ask, what is that? So, yeah, this, this plan may not work, but, um... I'll tell you what, how about I, uh, I try it out. Transform, let me try this thing out. Oh. Okay. Alrighty. Whoa, 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 come on, go, man, go, 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 you stupid little rodent, go, get the rings, 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 get the rings. oh my god, oh, no, no. man, see, it's fun, isn't it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's okay, oh, man, seriously, go, oh, almost, almost got hit by that, okay, go, 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 okay, so, um, I think it's time to get back to work. No, oh, come on, five more minutes. Five. Oh, come on, get that, get it, 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 get it.